Let's continue with other ways to modify the basic shapes. Before we do this on a 3D object, let's first understand how we can draw a recessed area on a 2D rectangle and a triangle. And then how we can replicate an area on one edge of the rectangle all the way to the other edges. We can do this with a straight and diagonal lines. If I draw a line from this point straight down, I'll obviously get the same distance on the bottom edge. But to replicate it on the other side, I have to draw a diagonal line. And wherever the initial line interacts with the diagonal, I can draw a horizontal line to both edges to get the exact same distance on the other edge. From the intersection points of the horizontal lines with the diagonal line, I can connect in between with a vertical line to get the other side of the top and bottom edges. And with that, we get 4 equal squares on all corners using this method. To get the same equation on the triangle, or to just divide this triangle into equal smaller triangles, we can simply divide every edge in half and connect these center points together to divide this big rectangle into 4 equal ones. We can then do the same to each triangle over and over, getting the same equal parts inside. And with that, we can get the same points on each edge exactly the same way on the other. Now all this is done in 2D shapes, so let's do the same now for 3D objects. For the box, we start with the amount of distance we want first and connect it to the vanishing point. This time, I'll start with the side edges instead of the top and bottom. But you can start with the top and bottom edges first to make it easier to connect them with vertical lines. Now I draw with diagonals and see where the horizontal line hits. Now we can draw vertical lines from these points to find the same distance on the top and bottom edges. These new lines also leave another intersection point with the diagonals and that will be the other point on the side edge when we connect them of course to the vanishing point. And with that, we get all edges divided in the same way. To replicate this to the other faces, we simply connect these points to the other vanishing point to get the side division. As for the top and bottom division of the new face, we draw new diagonals and wherever this horizontal line heads, we get our top and bottom division. You can continue the same operation all over the box to get the exact points on all faces. As for the pyramid, we can divide the top edges by drawing a vertical line beside them and connect the top of the pyramid to the vanishing point. Then we divide this line in half and connect it to the vanishing point to divide the edge of the pyramid in half. We can do a horizontal line to get the same point all around. As for the bottom edges of the front facing edge, we can simply measure its center and with it we can draw the inside triangle and divide this face into 4 equal parts. From it, we can do the same to the smaller and smaller triangles, using the same vertical line to divide more and more distances. To divide the other faces, we don't need to go into much trouble. Just connect this point to the vanishing point and you will get the other faces divided as well. With that knowledge, let's actually use the fillet operation on this box. But before that, let's look at the differences between the fillet, chamfer and smooth operation. In 3D software, all these are called chamfer, with different options. So for the fillet, we only smooth the point of the box in all three directions. With the edges themselves staying in the same on all sides. With the chamfer, we smooth the whole edge from all three directions in a straight line. You can see at the end of the object, the line between the top and side is still a straight line. As for the smooth operation, it's the same as the chamfer, but with a curved edge in between the areas to make it look a bit smoother. So that's basically what we will do here using perspective. Okay, first let's decide how much modification we want to do to the box and select the distance of that point on one edge. Next, I connect that point to the vanishing point to get the other side of the face. Then I add diagonals to see where this interacts with the cross lines. This point is the guide for the vertical guideline for the top and bottom points. At the same time, the intersection of the vertical line on the bottom with the diagonal is the new guideline for the bottom part of the box on the side. So now we have all points figured out. We can now transfer them to all other faces by connecting them to the other vanishing point. To get the top and bottom of the other faces, we can draw diagonals on each face and see where these lines interact to get the new points on the top and bottom.
Now that we have all three directions filled for each corner of the box, we can start connecting these points as a triangle on each corner. The rest of the edge will stay straight as it was, since this is just a fillet and not a full chamfer. And here is the final box with chamfered corn. We can now add some values to make it look better. And here it is, all done in a very simple way. Let's now try chamfering the whole edge. To chamfer all edges, we start with the exact same way, finding the outline corner in all directions. But this time, we won't just connect the corners, we also offset the edge as well. And you can do this in two ways, by using triangles or rectangles. What I mean is, the corner can either separate in three directions or four directions. Let's first see how the triangle works. Just like we did before, but instead of connecting the three points in one triangle, we connect the top rectangle and the bottom rectangle we offset while leaving only the corner in a triangle. This way the face on top is now offset internally and connected to the other side with a straight line. But in this option, the corners still look like a triangle.
There is another option that connects the top and the sides with a straight line on all sides, including the corners. Here how it goes. We do the same process all the way to the outline. Here I outline the inner rectangle on the top and bottom and on the original box. Instead of drawing a triangle in the corner, it just continues all the way around. With these four rectangles, I just connect the corners in between to get the chamfered box without any triangulation in between. It's a bit cleaner and faster to do it like this than the previous method, but both methods are correct. It just depends on what you want your shape to be. Okay, let's move on to smoothing objects with round corners. There are two ways to go at this as well, the methodical way or just eyeballing it. We will do it right the first time and then try to do it by eyesight. So let's first draw the box, then we will start smoothing it up. To do so, let's draw the diagonal and the cross line for the top part of the box. Next, let's divide the smaller four rectangles we created with cross lines and diagonal. This way we end up with four small rectangles divided both ways. So now let's draw an ellipse in every rectangle we made. The idea here is to curve the corners based on an actual ellipse on top, so we get it exactly right. So here is the first ellipse, let's do the rest. You can of course do this manually by drawing the ellipse or on Photoshop if you are working digitally by using the ellipse marquee tool. Now we have four ellipses on top. We can delete the parts of the ellipse that we don't need because we only need the corner tangent of each ellipse. So I draw verticals from each part of the corner of the ellipse down the box. Because this is the part I want to curve, if I want smaller curves, I would divide the rectangles on top even more and get even more ellipses on top. I can of course copy the rectangles I made on top down line by line and then draw four more ellipses on the bottom. But I can simply copy the ellipse down to make it fit the bottom box instead. If you are following along, I do advise you to do it manually just for practice. But for now, we have four ellipses on top and four on the bottom. I can delete all the parts I don't need and leave the corners behind. All I have to do now is connect between these arches all around the top and bottom to get my smooth out box.
There might be some mistakes here due to copying the lips down. I should have probably redrawn the line for better accuracy. But I can just adjust it as I go along. So now that we have the visible parts drawn, I can clean the outline and hide the construction lines. And here it is, all done. I do some lines around the curved part just to add some form lines to make the idea of the curve even cleaner. Now this box is smooth on all sides, not just the top like before. The top and bottom edges are still sharp, while the sides are smoothed out. So let's do this the other way, so we can see how it will work on all sides. Let's go back to the previous box. We go through this in the same exact way as before, adding the diagonals, deciding how much we want to smooth the edges, and draw it all around. The only difference here this time, we don't draw rectangles in straight lines, but more in curved lines. This way we have a curved triangle in the corner instead of the straight triangle. After doing this on all corners, we can connect in between to get the top smoothed out. Now we can only curve the top and leave the bottom sharp. But let's see how we can do this in a quick eyesighting way. You simply just curve the corners in a way that is equal to the distance on top. You can do this for speed or sketching, but if you are doing correct measured shape, you have to go at it like we did before. And here are all the previous examples side by side, from fillet, to chamfer, to smooth box, all done. We will need these techniques later when we draw props in chapter 2 and 3. So do practice these different ways to smooth an object a lot, they will come in handy later on. Let's now talk about subdivision. Subdivision isn't really a modification tool, like the ones before, but more of a preparation tool for upcoming modification. Subdivision prepares the area in or on your object for future modification. For example, if you want to add a cylinder inside a box, you need to do some subdivision first, if you want some accurate placement. We already talked about the division in previous lesson, but let's go over it one more time. Because this is important for future lessons. So let's subdivide this box in both ways. We can divide the vertical edge of the box by simply dividing in half, since they are vertical straight lines. As for the bottom and top edges, we can draw a line, connect it to the corner of the box all the way to the vanishing point, or a random measuring point if you want on the horizon line. Then we divide that line into two or more divisions and connect the middle point all the way to the vanishing point. We can do the same for the other side and connect it to the opposite vanishing point. This way we can divide the box all around in both ways.
And here we have it, a box divided into four parts on each single face. Let's do another example, and this time let's draw a flat box with lots more subdivisions. We draw a flat line and connect it to the corner all the way to the vanishing point, and divide that line into eight equal parts. Then we connect these points back to the vanishing point, crossing the bottom edge of the box. Then I draw a vertical line all the way around the box by connecting them to the top, back to the vanishing point. For the other side, we do the same process but with another horizontal line and connect it to the opposite vanishing point or a random point on the horizon line. And then we do the same thing all around. We end up with a box divided into eight parts on each different face. We can subdivide it even more by splitting the box in half vertically and connecting it to both vanishing points and ending up with 16 divisions on each side. You can go as far as you want with these simple tools because they will help us a lot in the upcoming lessons. Let's subdivide this pyramid now using the same method we did before. We can measure the equal parts on each side using the horizontal lines and connecting each to the opposite vanishing point. Then we connect the intersected points to the top of the pyramid. This way we can divide the pyramid vertically. If you want to divide it horizontally, we do the same thing with the top lines by measuring it toward the vertical line. And then dividing it in half and connecting it both to the vanishing point. This way we get six different divisions on each side. Now these divisions are not equal since this is a pyramid and it's getting smaller as it goes to the top but it can be divided this way. If you want equal divisions then we do it like we did before by finding the center of each line using vertical and horizontal lines. and then connecting them to each other to find the center triangle, leaving four smaller equal triangles on each face. So you can do it either way to get what you want. You can also connect the center of the edges of the opposite corner of the triangle to get the true center of the triangle, and then connect that to the top of the pyramid, dividing the face into six different divisions. So there are so many ways to divide a pyramid, and you can use the method that fits your purpose the most. Finally, let's divide the cylinder. The cylinder is unique when it comes to subdivision. The top and bottom faces have to be subdivided as ellipses by finding their center and then dividing it afterwards. To do that, we can draw the diagonals and then draw the cross sections all around. You can add as much points as you need if you want more divisions. So once I have enough divisions, I can connect between these points to the center of the ellipse and get 12 different divisions all around. I 
I can then connect these points down to divide the cylinder vertically according to the top and bottom ellipses. To divide the cylinder horizontally, I can use the surrounding box to draw a plane in the middle and then draw an ellipse in that plane as a form line division horizontally. We can divide this further by moving this line up and down by drawing other planes in the bottom or the top of the center for more division. And in the end, we get our subdivided cylinder. And with that, we get to the end of this lesson. Smoothing objects is going to come in handy later because most objects in reality are not sharp. There are no 90 degrees angles in reality. They are just different variations of smoothing degrees that differ from one object to the other. As for the subdivisions, we are going to be using these to measure distances within an object, to cut and boolean different objects together, and for further modifications technique later on. So practice a lot on these methods, and learn as much as possible before moving on to the next one. In the next lesson, we are going to start building on the subdivision methods to stack boxes on top of each other. We are going to stack boxes next to each other with spaces in all directions. We are also going to talk briefly about referencing objects to each other, but just as an introduction for now, and we will expand on that later on. So it's going to be an interesting lesson. As always, if you like this lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section, and I will do my best to answer it as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.